I would have given you a zero, but that is not possible, so I give you a one. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name's Lena and I make videos about whatever I deem vaguely interesting, but with the planet in mind. I've done a lot of kind of secondhand clothes videos, that kind of thing. If you're interested in watching those, they're up there to save for later. But today we're gonna to be delving into the depths of my spiritual archives, um, my old fashioned blog. <laughs> so I don't know if you have any niche interests on YouTube. Um, this is probably not niche, but it's, it's, not, it's, it's not quite adjacent to what I'm interested in. But I love this guy who does these videos. His, his channel's called Hotler Mode, and he does, he's a complete fashion expert, and he does really roasting reviews of celebrity red carpets, and talks about like what they're wearing. And for some reason, it's completely enthralling, completely entertaining. And I thought today it'd be interesting to go through my personal outfit archives, look at what I used to love, and just critique it, see if I'd like any of it today, see of what I could learn of my 2010 self, because yes, that's how far back we're going. <laughs> <laughs> 2010. 2010 was an intense year for me recording what I wore. Me and my friend Hattie lived in Aberystwyth, which is a very small town in Wales. There wasn't much to do. And we both had fashion blogs where we go around and we take pictures of each other. So some of these are self timer videos and some of these are ones that we took of each other. They're very cute. They're very timely. Some of them are incredibly questionable, but I just wanted to review them because I think it's fun to look back at what you used to love, see if there's anything that you can incorporate into your current wardrobe and see if there's anything that I spot that I actually still own. So this first outfit, I remember building around this hair clip on the left that my auntie gave me. My auntie is Argentinian and she bought this back from Argentina and I thought it was beautiful. I loved all the colors and I just wanted to like make an outfit that vaguely complemented it. It's not a particularly daring, <laughs> outfit, I'll give you that. But I also had these Monopoly hotel earrings, <laughs> like for some reason, the capitalist in th inside of me was enthralled by them. Uh, my friend Ruth actually made them. I used to wear them all the freaking time. I definitely still have those and I have worn those in videos. If you look closely, I definitely still have those, but that, that's a great way to, I guess, recycle gaming stuff. If you've lost half your Monopoly set, like imagine just recycling all into jewelry, genius. So yeah, and I paired it with, oh, this belt was actually my dad's old scout belt. So when he went to scouts, <laughs> for some reason he still had the belt. And for some reason that fit around my waist in 2010. How old are you when you're in Scouts? Like 11? Jesus, 11. So my dad's 11 year old, sure. It looks like some kind of short black dress and big charity shop cardigan. I remember this cardigan. I got this cardigan for like a pound. Why I got rid of it, I don't know. Very devastated. And then just looking towards the bottom, some very questionable moccasins I definitely got from Primark. I think I remember they were about nine pounds and um, they're really culturally insensitive. Such was 2010, apparently just selling those, sure. For this outfit, I appreciate it that it was inspired by a gift by a loving family member, but ultimately completely unimaginative. I don't really love how much black I'm wearing. I know that that's not really that me. Again, with the fast fashion moccasins. <laughs> no, so I'm gonna, while I like the fact that I have nice long hair in this and I look I look very nice, well done, Lena. Uh, for, for fashion and imagination, even though there are some recycled elements to it, which will add numbers, I guess I'm gonna give this around a four, just because I appreciate how much stuff is gifted or secondhand, but also, mm, no. This second outfit, <laughs> really reminds me of that kind of 2010 blogger aesthetic. It was very cutesy, it was very delicate, it was very Kath Kidston. There were a lot of these cowboy boots around. And while this is completely not me, I can appreciate it as an aesthetic. I think it's got a kind of 70s vibe. Is these, I'm not really into like tiny patterns, but they're nice swallows on the dress, I suppose. I like the navy with the navy. That shirt was my mum's. The necklace that I'm wearing is actually like a clay ban the bomb necklace that I think was my grandma's when she was campaigning for that. So like, again, lots of recycled elements to the outfit. Don't love the socks poking out over the boots, but overall this is quite elegant. And I do like the side bun, which is again, 100% not my personality, but apparently at the time made me feel inspired. And I can appreciate that. So I can see the inspiration. I can see what I was pulling. It's not very adventurous, but it is quite elegant. So I'm gonna give it a six and a half because 
I probably would wear this today under duress. I think it's quite nice. Lacks imagination, but not bad. Now this outfit, this is my Cadbury's outfit. I remember very specifically trying to dress like a chocolate bar. So I remember finding this secondhand dress from a charity shop and it's kind of like a shiny vinyl glittery thing. I'd love to show you how it moved, but I remember it so vividly. It's kind of a sack basically, but a fun sack. Um, so basically I ended up pulling out all of the purple things I owned and trying to do a kind of Cadbury's, like I'm a chocolate wrapper themed <laughs> outfit for the library, apparently, sure. 2010 Lena's like, I see my incredibly large middle English reading list <laughs> and I raise you, spending half my day dressing up as inanimate edible objects to attend. <laughs> said reading list that I never completed. But the genius here is in the detail. I got this kind of literal chocolate <laughs> box wrapped um, ribbon I got off a chocolate box and put it in my hair. I got some glittery eyeshadow. And I also had this kind of like glittery necklace thing. So I, I really appreciate this outfit. And I, I would wear this today. I remember this massive, huge purple bag I had that I had for years. The only thing I'd probably change, I like the purple tights, but the shoes were, I don't really have that many pairs of shoes, I guess. I don't really have that many options. Definitely didn't have any purple shoes, but they're like really scrappy, Nike plimsolls and they, they kind of like throw off the thing. I guess they match the hair. If I was gonna be generous, they match the hair ribbon. But apart from that, mm. But I do really appreciate the effort behind this and I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10 because I would wear this today because of the secondhand elements and because there's an idea behind it. It's, it's going somewhere. Love it. Now I remember what I called this outfit on the vlog. It was called Canada meets Chanel. And it's this old kind of lecturer, I guess, blazer I found in a charity shop that kind of reminded me of Chanel. It has like the trimming. For some reason, I remember it was originally from Next. I'm wearing just a classic mini skirt with it, some black trainers and underneath a tourist t-shirt. Again, that I remember finding for a pound in a charity shop for Canada. Have I ever been to the, to the country of Canada? No. Have I worn this shirt relentlessly for the past 12 years? Yes. In fact, I still have it. You probably still recognize it in loads of my videos. I love this t-shirt. It was something about the fit, the consistency, but that is still in my currently wearing wardrobe and I'm quite proud of that. However, overall, I appreciate, Lena, the idea that you wanted to try a different style, try and look like you cared about Chanel. I believe I have a kind of bouffant bit at the back. I've obviously backcombed my half ponytail into a kind of style, which I like. Um, overall, this isn't that imaginative, but I do I do like the direction it's taking. So I'm going to give it a five. I'm going to give it a five. And for the bravery of wearing a bodycon black skirt, which I know at the time gave me huge amounts of fear and dysphoria, even though I don't know if you ever have this, but like when you look at pictures of yourself from the past and you remember how you felt about your body, but now you can objectively see your body and you're like, what are you talking about? But I really remember during this period feeling incredibly overweight, incredibly insecure. I always felt like I was like in inverted commas, what people used to call in 2010, the fat friend, which is just, there's nothing wrong with that. And also the body dysmorphia. I can't, anyway, this outfit was called Castle on a Cloud. Again, I'm using that Chanel jacket. This is more of an arty few shots. I'm obviously an avarice with Castle. You can see these next slides that um, I'm wearing. This, this, this circle scarf around my neck is a top that I just like, I pinned the straps in and then I just like wore it over my head like, because I didn't have a circle scarf. <laughs> so I, I like the way that I've tried to like, and, and, oh, and also that skirt that I'm wearing is a top. So I'm actually wearing three tops is what you're looking at here with some Clark's Gladiator sandals. So again, I appreciate the innovation. You're gonna get points for that, Lena. I don't enjoy the color scheme. It's a bit too Brits abroad for me, <laughs> considering you're in Wales and you're wearing the flag of the oppressor. <laughs> the United Kingdom flag. I don't love that. And also I can tell that in the pictures I'm really pulling my, you know, it's supposed to be a style, but I'm actually trying to pull my waist in, try and look as, as skinny as possible. So we don't love that. I think I can visibly see in the pictures that I am not comfortable in this outfit, even though I want to feel sexy. I know that this is more like my idea of what was sexy to other people, which is which is sad, but we move, we move, it's not me anymore. So I'm gonna give this a, a Four out of 10, just because making three tops into one whole outfit, you've got to have some points for that. But in general, it's a no from me. Now, 
clothes show live. This was when I won tickets. I think actually maybe Hattie won the tickets, or maybe I did, I can't remember. Tickets to, to clothes show live, because there's this blogger that we loved called What Katie Wore, who blog is also no longer live. Um, and she was doing a giveaway um, and we got to go to clothes show live London. It was probably one of like the uh, not very many times I've been to London at this point. I took loads of pictures of just being on the tube because I was like, I'm on the tube, I'm on the tube. And I spent days if not maybe weeks planning this outfit. This outfit actually um, consists of loads of different elements and that's why I'm kind of proud of it. It's a lot of layering. I would wear this today 100%. It also consists of that Joseph Technicolor dream coat, like buttons jacket you saw in my closet clear out video uh, that I still have. This gold elephant necklace that I wore to death some more mass, I was really into like massive beaded necklaces then. And I realized that that Argentinian hair clip really matched the jacket. So I kind of put it all together, which I quite like. I went for, I think I'm wearing a purp, a pink strap. Yes, God, it's all coming back to me. I'm wearing a pink strap top as a skirt. On top of that, I'm wearing a really short turquoise skirt, a beige strap top, and then all of this going on here. What's interesting is it looks like the kind of outfits that I threw together for lectures or like I just wanted to feel in inverted commas sexy. I, they didn't age well, I don't like them anymore. But this one, which I definitely spent a load of time on and I thought I'm going to London, that's where people are creative. Oh my God, I'm also wearing <laughs> shoelaces in my hair. They're rainbow shoelaces and I thought it'd be cool to tie them in my bun, which I still support, I love that. Anyway, the point is, I think I remember spending a lot of time on this outfit and feeling like I could go a bit further, like push the boundaries a little bit more. And I still love it. Like, I still think this is a great outfit without seeming pompous. Like, I think I look sick. <laughs> well done, 20 year old Lena. I'm gonna give this a nine and a half just because I, I feel like there should still be wiggle room to grow in, but we brought it, we served it, we appreciate it. Timeless, mm, okay. Oh, how the mighty fall again. We're back. This is a double denim outfit. You can tell that because what you think might be tights is actually jeggings. Who remembers jeggings? Oh wait, they brought them back. Why? Why? These are extreme jeggings in that they definitely gave me camel toe, which is why I'm wearing a really long tank top with them. And because they were really cheaply printed <laughs> impressions of denim material on the top of the spandex. So at least I lead into it though. This is a very 80s look. I have these kind of, I remember these are, these are bone marrow earrings, which again, as an aspiring vegan and vegetarian, why did I buy those? But they're made out of bone, animal bone marrow, sure. Uh, this is my dad's old denim shirt. I actually recently gave this back to him because I was like, dad, I'm not wearing it that much anymore, but thanks for the 10 year loan. And he was like, no worries. <laughs> There's not really much to this outfit, so I can't say that much about it. I very rarely tie my shirts like this because for some reason in my default head, it's, it feels unflattering. But I actually think it looks really cool and I need to stop focusing on things being flattering. So I like the indigo, I like the blue, hate the jeggings. The bone marrow earrings look cool, but fundamentally a mistake. This is a five out of 10, a five out of 10 at best. This is adorable. I am wearing a old blue cotton skirt and then this big oversized, a good thing in Aberystwyth was that there were a shit ton of charity shops. There's like, it's the, the whole place, right, is a mile and a half across. It has 53 pubs, and I would say at least 20 charity shops. There's only bloody about, I think there's I think there's like 20,000, 25,000 people that live there. But anyway, I remember this was another pound charity shop jumper find. I wish I still had this jumper. I don't know what I did with it, but it was, it had loads of flex in it. It had a really interesting texture to it. I've worn a little, like, pink bow in my hair. I've committed to the oversized cuteness. I'm obviously not worried about looking thinner in this, which I love. I think I look like I'm having a lot of fun. I'm wearing a lot of eyeliner, which is a look that I still really, really love. So this one looks a lot more recognizably me and I'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of 10, I think, because while there's not loads of effort put in, I think what has been chosen has been chosen well. And I think it's stuck to a really nice timeless, I don't care, but also I like color aesthetic. I can appreciate, I can appreciate, Lena. Now this one is incredibly cutesy. I'm in a forest for some reason. I actually think this is just a strategic thing from Hattie of uh, framing some trees between our two 
uh, student blocks. I don't think this is an actual forest. Kultmauer block M <laughs> represent. I've got a huge white flower in my hair. Still really love massive, huge flowers. So I like that. I've got a beige tank top on, a gold flecked cardigan. And then I've got one of those huge, do you remember those huge belts? Like they're like this thick that you wore around your waist. I've got a huge brown belt like that. And then a little floral pinky kind of skirt and some heels. I know that I didn't wear these heels that often. I remember though, I barely wore those. <laughs> Probably just for the picture and then took them off. I think that the colour story is quite consistent in this. I like that there's the light on the skirt, reflects the light in the hair. It's not very bold. It's definitely from a place of more beige. This is the most beige I've ever seen myself in. I'm definitely gonna have spilt quite a lot of ketchup on that by the end of the day. So it definitely probably wouldn't suit my lifestyle, but I do, I do really like it. I think it's cute. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 just because maybe beige was what I was uncomfortable with and I was pushing myself out of my comfort zone and into other people's. It ties well together. I can't fault it. Seven out of 10. Now this outfit features that pink bow from before and a gold dress. This is a really, if you look at the details, a really garish, foily, almost plastic gold dress. I used to really revel, I couldn't really afford to shop at Topshop, but when they had really big sales, they'd, they'd sell their evening dresses off, the ones that are a bit garish and like people obviously just hadn't vibed with for like 10 pounds. So I remember getting this for like 10 pounds, had a big bow on it. It was quite ill-fitting, very, very synthetic, but I was excited that I could buy something from Topshop and I really liked the gold. So I bought it. I didn't wear it loads, but I really enjoyed styling it. I put that gold cardigan with it from the last outfit, but in this it's like, makes much more sense. It's like much more exciting. I'm wearing some kind of dangly butterfly necklace. <laughs> but what I do appreciate it is that my, I'm wearing my jeggings. I'm wearing that beige tank top underneath the dress so that it's not like scandalous for the day. Uh, and then under that, I'm wearing my jeggings and those beige socks from the cowboy boots. So this, this is actually, you can see almost all elements of this outfit have been seen in other outfits. So that's interesting. I like the rewear value. The only really new thing is that gold dress. For some reason, I actually don't hate the jeggings now that they're like this. I don't know what I did, but I don't, I no longer hate the jeggings with this. I also like that I have pink nail varnish on and I've paired it with my diacroptic ring, which I still have and always wear, that has pink and gold in it. This is a kind of outfit that I can get behind. I'm clearly finding my style a little bit more in this one, and I think I look confident in it. I definitely look like I'm having a lot of fun. I would give this a, a nine out of 10. I would probably wear this, maybe with tights instead of jeggings, but I don't know, after a few gins, I could be persuaded. How do you solve a problem like Maria? This outfit was completely inspired by the fact that I realized that these gates <laughs> exist in Aberystwyth and they reminded me of the gates from The Sound of Music. So I tried to dig out some bits of my outfit that I thought could look vaguely Sound of Music-ish. I don't think that's my hat. I don't know whose hat that was, but it definitely wasn't mine. So a borrowed hat. This is a wool Jaeger blazer that I found, I think it was like 20 quid or something. I found it in a charity shop, but like Jaeger's like really expensive, right? I don't know how expensive, but like that's a, that's a, that's a posh brand. It was like a hundred percent wool. I think I sold it and I'm mad about it, even though it probably definitely wouldn't fit me now, but it was such a cool little blazer. I wore that blazer a lot. I'm wearing like a horrible white rouged shirt underneath, which I a hundred percent disapprove of now. But like, remember when like rouging around the boobs on a shirt was like really cool? Why? That big thick brown belt, that turquoise skirt that you've seen before again. I actually didn't realize how much I like kind of outfit repeated during this point, but I'm actually better at it then than I am now. Um, so that's interesting. And a kind of burgundy handbag. Apart from the wool blazer, I have to honestly say, none of this looks anything like what Maria von Trapp would wear. So on the concept front, it's kind of like all celebrities who attend the Met Gala. I completely ignored the assignment. I erased the assignment from my mind, but I like the gates and I like the fact that I experimented with a hat, a notorious uh, element of fashion that I am forever hesitant to even touch. So the fact that I was I had the initiative to borrow a hat and try was great. I think the pictures are nice, but I don't know about the outfit. So I'm gonna give this a five out of 10, even though 
I would like to do more Sound of Music themed outfits. That's a cool thing to do. This wasn't it. I remember very clearly the thought process behind this. This jumper isn't mine. I borrowed this from my housemate, Jen. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> but I remember begging to borrow it from her because I'd found this blue dress. That if you look very closely, it has loads of geometrical triangles and stuff and elements to it. And I knew that she had that jumper and I was like, together, it could be like a maths outfit. <laughs> And it was, this is my maths outfit. I also had this brown belt, this smaller brown belt that had some triangle detail, if you look very closely, on the clasp. So just literally, what am I wearing around my wrist? I think I'm wearing some festival bracelets around my wrist, sure. Or it's a WWJD wristband, who knows. But this is a very Welsh summer appropriate outfit. You have to have a jumper when you're in Wales, whatever the season. And I would have probably carried some tights in my bag ready for this but I like the primary colors I would probably wear this today but it's quite simple so I can't give it loads of you know like there wasn't a big thought process behind it but I like the details that that feed into it the, some elements the gladiator brown sandals I guess match the belt so the, there's something to it I'm gonna give it a six because there's, there's nothing to complain about here but there's also nothing to write home about <laughs> okay this was my Mayball outfit. Why I posed by a recycling bin, I'll never know. But this was my Mayball outfit. I actually do remember spending ages trying to decide what to wear and instead went for this. Let me just talk you through it before I tell you what I think. So I'm wearing that wall blazer, the Maria Von Trapp wall blazer. I'm wearing that scouting belt um, from my dad. The gladiator sandals never fail. Yes, this was the most formal event of the year, but what can I say? Avarist with. And I'm wearing this tie-dye pink wrap skirt. I'm wearing it as a dress. It had loads of layers. So you can see the top layer is tie-dye pink. And then below it, it has like a frill layer. And then like two more layers to make it puff out. I do think that's a cool skirt. I don't think it's aged well. I don't know if I'd wear it now. It's a bit, I don't know. I don't think it's very me anymore. But I do remember that you can't see it very well, but I was wearing shell earrings, like whole shells as earrings. And I think if I was gonna rationalize myself, I was going for a aerial beached on the sand, wrapped in a sail kind of vibe. I fundamentally believe that that's what I was trying to go for. So as the guy from Hot Limone would say, do I get it? Yes. Do I understand it? Yes. Do I love it? No. Six and a half out of 10. Oh, but wait, coming up at the back of that, I'm showing the bag. Now the bag, was a wild card, but I wore this bag all the time. It is gross, but also I love it. It was, I got it from Camden Market when I went to the clothes show live. So I felt very stylish and cosmopolitan. So I'm like, I got this bag from London. I don't know if you've ever been to London. They have frilly bags there, <laughs> but it's just like a mass of frills in different directions and gold tapestry. And it's like such a mess, but also a massive vibe. And I missed that bag. I wore it into the ground until it was literally in tatters. But I think the bag actually makes the outfit make more sense. And I'm actually gonna give it another point for that. That's, it gets an extra point for, ca for carrying the bag alone, Lena. You made morsels out of mystery. So for that, it's cool. <laughs> Why did I do a photo shoot outside my old secondary school? I don't know. Maybe I was going in there for something. These are some huge tulipy like huge are they harem pants i don't know bright red trousers i remember getting from a dressing up box at church i think they were like leftovers from the from the church pantomime or something like that and for some reason they were gonna be chucked away or something was happening and i really claimed them and was like no please i want them and I wore this quite a lot in the summer. They're elasticated at the knee. Obviously you can see that I am displaying that there is room for fun <laughs> on the left. And I'm wearing my Noah and the Whale t-shirt, which I think juxtaposed quite cool with the kind of like bright summery thing at the bottom and then like a kind of cool graphic tee on the top. Noah and the Whale, not a band I can complain about liking. I think this is simple. I think this is elegant. I didn't, I just let the, the red speak for itself. If I was doing it now, I'd wear a bright red lip and maybe some bright red boots as well. I could really commit to the red, uh, but I really like this for some reason, completely inappropriate setting, but I like that I'm wearing sunglasses on my head and like I have loads of like shag bands on my wrist. Remember shag bands? We don't speak. If you don't know, I can't speak of it. We can't, it's to those who knew. We have to live with it. 
that's all. And my gladiator sandals. I actually really like this. And for no rational reason that I won't defend, I'm gonna give it a nine. I don't know why, I just really like it still. This is another one that I still stand by. This is a lot of layering in it. This is, uh, I'll talk you through what's happening because it's just a lot happening. <laughs> it's a zebra print top, cinched in with that scouting belt over a polka dot 50s green dress over that blue turquoise skirt you've seen in loads of things. No shoes, a bright pink bangle, and then that big white flower accessory that you've seen before. I painted my toenails the same color as the skirt, which I appreciate. Then a toothy necklace that was definitely a Flintstones cave girl outfit accessory from a night out and a envelope gold necklace that were everywhere at that time. I don't know if you remember those, but envelope gold necklaces, for some reason, massive thing in 2010. Don't know why I'm generally not wearing shoes until the last picture, but while I think most people will hate this, I still quite like it. I think there's elements to it that I like. I have a lot to critique. I obviously knew the shoes didn't go with it, which is why I took most of the pictures without shoes on. And I like the zebra print. Zebra print isn't something that I usually wear a lot of, and maybe I should, because it's also, it has the same vibes as leopard print. If you haven't watched my leopard print video, I feel a lot, have a lot of feelings about leopard print and I can intellectually defend them all. But zebra print isn't something I have worn very much, and maybe that's a problem. I like the pop of color with the bangle. I think that brings it together quite nicely. This is an eight out of 10. I don't hate that at all. This, however, <laughs> I can't defend this. <laughs> there is no feasible defense. It's more the arm warmers. Like they are arm warmers, but why am I wearing them with a strap top? I don't know. A very baggy navy tank top, loads of beads. Don't know where I got all those beads from. And then I've attached the hair accessory to the belt. I hate the poses. <laughs> I just know that the problem is I wasn't on, going on a night out. This wasn't like, I just know that I wore that to lectures. I just turned up in a spaghetti strap top, dead serious, wearing massive arm warmers up to here. Some very skinny black leggings with it. I don't support, <laughs> I didn't do this. This, however, were early signs of my Helena core love and aesthetic. This is very steampunk. I'm wearing a very tight waistcoat. I'm wearing a white shirt, but then I'm also wearing like a brown shirt over the top. I'm wearing like this stripy scarf that was made out of t-shirt material. I remember very vividly getting that from H&M. These are, you can't tell, but these are some brown tweed pedal pushers and my gladiator sandals because the options were limited. I really like this waistcoat. Ever since discovering Rachel Maxi on YouTube and just like watching what people, I really love waistcoats. This isn't quite what I would be going for now, but I do really like it. And it has got an element of Helena core to it. So for that, I think it's an interesting historical artifact and I'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of 10. I do think this was more daring for me. And I do think it has like an element of like good personal statement style to it. I appreciate it. I know what you were doing. I love it. Oh look, and I'm also, oh no, this might draw, drag down. These glasses, they're like the razor thin glasses that I used to wear. We don't love those, but I do like the Victoriana little headpiece that I'm wearing around my neck, nice little detail. Now this is a classic night out picture, posing with my best friend on a night out, the tampon machine. Big black high heels with a strap at the ankle. I think these are my prom shoes, so props for recycling those. They're definitely my school prom shoes that I was wearing on first or second, so first year of uni night out. That very short, floral skirt, risky, because I hadn't discovered chub rub shorts by this point, so definitely just wearing knickers underneath that, danger. A big, thick, chunky white belt, and then like my dad's old denim shirt over the top. I like this, I think it combines the casual on the top to like prom shoes on the bottom, like the audacity. I quite like how this all combines together thematically. I don't love the color combo, like florals with some denim, but also some black and some shiny stuff, like not sure, but I do, I wouldn't, I don't hate that. I think I would wear that again. So I think that's gonna be an eight and a half, I think. Just cause I think, I just think, even though I was so insecure at the time, you can look back and be like, Lena, you look quite nice, chill out. This, however, was an abuse of my waistcoat powers. I owned a waistcoat, I could fit into the waistcoat. And what did I do with it? I did this. <laughs> I just don't think I like these boots anymore, the cowboy boots. I had this really ugly, well, sorry, but I think it's ugly, tiered floral dress that just, I don't know, I remember feeling quite awkward in it. For some reason I thought, I'll just pair it with a striped 
waistcoat, why, over like a black top as well with a ribbon in my hair. I just think this has a lot of ideas going on and none of them are speaking to each other. They're all in separate pods, speaking separate languages. Why is this all in one outfit? I don't know. And that was also the week that I cut my fringe with a pair of scissors and documented it on the internet for some unknown reason. So I think the dangly earrings bring some kind of thought to it, but I think this was, this, this looks like a panic outfit. This looks like you gotta get a blog post up, gotta do something creative. I'm gonna give it a one out of 10. It's a, it's a one. I would have given you a zero, but that is not possible. So I give you a one. It's not for me. And then finally, this is more of like a Victorian outfit. This was like a gold lace top. Again, I got from a charity shop. I would have liked it more if I wore my beige tank top underneath it instead of my black one, but we live, we learn. <laughs> Can't go back. A black flared skirt, some kind of dangly 70s necklace, my shell earrings. I like the fact that I took a picture of the detailing on the back of the charity shop top, that's nice. And I managed to roll down my cowboy boots to make them look, make my legs look longer, make them look a bit more individual, less cowboy-y. And uh, I actually really like, I appreciate what I did with the boots there. And again, it's just so weird to look back at these pictures and think like how much I didn't like my body and how like worried I was about what other people thought because it's tragic. And now I've got to sit with the idea that 42 year old Lena might look back at pictures of me today and be like, Lena, you look great. What are you worried about? <laughs> So I guess that's one of the takeaways we can take from this exercise. So for this final outfit, why not? We've got nowhere to go. Congratulate yourself because nobody else is going to. I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10 because nobody can stop me. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's interesting to see how my thrifted second handy kind of rewearing journey has come on since 2010. I'm so, it's just so weird to think that I was also an adult 12 years ago. Do you know what I mean? Like that's a long time ago and I was also an adult then. I was in my first year of university and I think I did a damn good job on a small budget in a small town. And it's also just interesting, I think, to think about the outfits that you've worn before and what, which ones you still love, like what elements are still around that you'd still wear. And also just like, thinking of yourself kindly in the past. Like I wish I could just like shake my own shoulders and be like, you look great. And even if you look bad and you're wearing that weird waistcoat, nobody cares. <laughs> Ultimately, you usually forget what outfits you're wearing unless you documented them like me because I'm a weirdo. And it's important how you feel on the day, how you feel in the moment. Let me know in the comments how you feel about your previous fashion choices and lives because I'd be fascinated to hear. If you want to watch more videos like this and get inspired with some secondhand fashion and rewearing things, you might like any of these videos. This video is made possible by the Gumption Club who tip me per video to make sure these videos keep happening. So thank you to them. Do not forget to subscribe so I can see you here again. <gasps> Frog's not out.